Hi, I'm Bryce Crittenden. Hi, I'm Caroline Land, and welcome back to EPL's Overdue Finds. Hey, Caroline, how are you today? I'm doing well, Bryce. How are you? Uh, great. We are in June now, yeah. and June means, of course, well, obviously summer, but that also means, like, for a lot of people, summer road trips. Uh, Caroline, do you have any summer road trips planned? <laughs> well, n- nothing specific at this moment. Uh, but at uh, my branch, I'm recording at my home branch of Capilano. And just outside my office, we have um, kind of a space where staff can uh, share things. We ask different questions from time to time. And this one is, what are you looking forward to this summer? And somebody wrote road trips, and then people have just been adding to it like road trips times two plus one so there's a lot of love for road trips for sure oh Oh, yeah and the key to a good road trip is well one is snacks in the car first of all but (laughs) the second one of course and probably the most important one of course is music you can't take a road trip without good tunes so today on overdue finds uh we're going back to our top five series it's just caroline and myself today and we're going to be sharing our personal top five favorite road trip songs this was hard this was a hard one yeah i was doing up my notes last night for this uh recording today and i was like yeah it's really hard to like narrow down five that and I mean, we're going to be giving a list. Of, I mean, at the end of this episode, you're going to have a list of ten songs where you could you could create your own mix, like road trip mix based on our picks. That would be awesome. But uh, and knowing us, there'll probably be a couple more than ten songs. Oh, probably, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. So, yeah, we're doing another top five episode today, and uh, yeah, this is going to be. So much fun as we uh, we share our uh, top five personal favorite road trip songs. So before we get into our Overdue Finds picks, I'd like to remind listeners that uh, tickets are now available for our next Forward Thinking Speaker Series event. You won't want to miss Jan Arden, My Story, presented by Edmonton Community Foundation on June 20th at the Northern Alberta Jubilee Auditorium. During this speaking event, Jan Arden will share her personal journey exploring the importance of adaptability and being built for change and how to find the good and the funny in all situations, even the most challenging. So secure your seat by visiting ticketmaster.ca or visit our website at epl.ca slash speaker series to uh, learn more about the event. Um, Yeah, it's funny. I, I help organize all these forward thinking speaker series events caroline and uh, we just had a phone call with uh, jan's rep uh, yesterday kind of going over some event details and uh, it's gonna be so good i'm so excited to uh that we're able to uh host jan arden for a for a speaking event this is gonna be great I th- I was there were some people in the branch talking about it yesterday, and they uh, asked if I had seen Jan's TV show, her sitcom that's based on a fictionalized version of herself, semi-fictionalized, I think. Um, and uh, I said, yes, it's great. If you love Jan Arden and her music, I think. People would really enjoy uh, her TV show. It uh, actually provided uh, one of the nicknames for my nephew. My sister and I were watching the show right after uh, my nephew was born, and one of the the lines from there turned into a nickname for uh, him. So it uh, definitely is a show that has uh, a special place in my heart. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great one. All right, Caroline. So before we share our top five uh, road trip songs, uh, let's share our recent overdue finds picks. Uh, What have you been enjoying lately? I came this close. I was so excited that I finally had a, a music for an overdue finds pick. And then I thought, oh, but that's all we're talking about today. So I'm not, I'm going to save it. And on our next episode, um, I am I, a preview teaser. I will have a music pick uh, for you. But this week, 
Um, I thought, okay, I'll talk about something else. And then I started reading this book that I couldn't wait to talk about. So the timing is perfect. And that book is Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. Uh, And this book, the description of it, a young Cree woman's dreams lead her on a mysterious journey to confront a legacy of violence that's been done to her family, her community, and her land. Um, This is it's described as horror laced, which I just love as a description. And the book opens with her uh, waking up out of a dream and realizing that uh, something she was uh, touching or holding in the dream, she's brought back into the real world with her and she can see it and then it disappears and this kind of leaves her on a bit shaky uh, and then she realizes that a bunch of crows are following her mm-hmm. and like deliberately following her with a purpose and she doesn't know how to deal with that she doesn't know what this means or how to process it and um, she has uh, experienced loss and trauma and she's grieving uh, she decides to go back to uh, her home to her family and connects with her mother and her sister and her cousins her aunts all of these family members and she learns about them as this mysterious dream world keeps happening Um, and then she starts receiving text messages from a mysterious number that has information that only her late sister could have known. So who is texting her? What are these dreams about? How? Why can she move between the worlds? Is it a vision? Is it a message? Is it an omen? What's going on here? The story is just incredibly compelling. It's Jessica Johns, um, her first novel. This was a, a short story uh, that was expanded into this novel. She's a member of the Sucker Creek First Nation in Treaty 8 territory in northern Alberta. And uh, I have to say I'm not quite finished of this book, but I I couldn't wait to talk about it. And just the way it has been compelling forward, um, I, I just, I, I, I needed to say people should check out this book, even though I haven't gotten to the end. Love it. That sounds, yeah, that sounds really good. I love the kind of the supernatural kind of feel to it. And uh, does the story itself, like obviously she's from Northern Alberta, does the story itself take place in Alberta? Do you know? or Partly, it, yeah, yeah. Partly. And um, that's actually a really big theme of it. Uh, when the story opens, she has... Um, She's she's working in, in BC and at a distance from her land, from her family, from where she grew up, her community. And um, she, that was a deliberate choice that she made after um, the death of, of her grandmother. And so uh, it talks, it the way that it depicts um, grieving and how different people process things in different ways and some people turn to others for comfort some people turn away but all of those decisions have ripple impacts uh, that affect a lot of other people so the the setting of the the book and her decision to return to her community is a huge theme of it yeah, that's, that sounds really good. Is it a new title as well? Yeah, it was published just earlier this year, and um, EPL does have uh, copies of it. So uh, p- I recommend people check out Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. Cool. A uh, little teaser for everybody. We will be doing, once again, a best of the year kind of mid-year review show. I have a feeling maybe based on that uh, recommendation maybe we could be getting another mention of that uh in the next month or two here definitely possible so um i i'm sure i'll be finishing it if not today then like tomorrow so uh maybe if it is on that episode i will uh have an update to see if my thoughts changed on it at all and i don't think they will it's been quite well received since it was published earlier this year great yeah so what have you been enjoying the Stanley Cup Finals is starting. <laughs> when I'm re- when we're recording this, I know the Florida Panthers will be there. I don't know who they're going to be playing. Probably Vegas when you're listening to this. But, um, yeah, I've been watching a lot of hockey. And, of course, you know, when I'm not watching hockey, 
I'm looking for new documentaries to watch. Uh, we've talked about documentaries already on, on the show in our recent Top 5 Documentaries episode. And Caroline, uh, you and I have both said we love sports documentaries. Yeah. And there was one on hockey that I came across. I'm like, let's just keep this hockey ball rolling here. So uh, the documentary is called Offside, the Harold Ballard story. So uh, this one is available for streaming right now through us on Hoopla. And I believe actually you can also uh, stream it through CBC's gym uh, service as well. So uh, Caroline, you grew up in Ontario. You probably know the name. You, are you aware of Harold Ballard at all? Uh, definitely know the name, yeah. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with Harold Ballard, um, actually, and I should mention, too, the documentary is actually directed and narrated by Jason Priestley. He's a he's a huge Maple Leafs fan. But uh, Harold Ballard, though, uh, was the owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, he owned the team for about close to 30 years anyway, uh, up until his death in 1990. So he was kind of viewed as this, uh, he's not, he wasn't viewed in a kind light back then, and he's definitely not viewed in a kind light in the lens of everything in 2023 especially. So uh, this is really interesting to go back and, and look at, you know, a lot of the stuff that's so controversial about him kind of really took place in like the like late 70s to the through the 80s anyway but yeah he was kind of known as being labeled as like a a cheap owner and uh so we get interviews in this uh documentary from uh former players uh that were on his teams that were kind of shipped out of town for you know one reason or another um and you know talking you know when you're watching this documentary a lot of maple leafs fans you know a lot of people will especially here in edmonton will make fun of maple leafs fans because the leafs haven't won a stanley cup since the 60s and when you're watching this documentary you can kind of see why that why that (laughs) is the case because you know he was kind of responsible for some very questionable moves moved out some very popular players um and uh they probably would have won uh maybe a cup or two probably in the in the late 70s if it wasn't uh for their owner anyway and of course the documentary goes into some of his very controversial comments um so yeah it's it's really interesting uh it's you know a few episodes ago i also recommended the show succession and so this is kind of a documentary that really reminded me of succession in a way because once we get to the final years of harold ballard's life you really kind of see like his his family comes into play because they know he's not in good health and who's going to control the team and he's got this living girlfriend who's just kind of latching on to him it's fascinating stuff so if you're a fan of kind of like if you're interested in a good canadian documentary about this larger than life uh persona in the hockey world this is this is a good one um and you know i say this a lot about sports documentaries i realize like oh you don't have to be a fan of this sport to enjoy (laughs) this but this is this is really true about this one it's it's fascinating Uh, i think you know you'll you know when you watch it now you're just like, why did the NHL allow this? And it's just, it's crazy. And it just kind of shows how far the sport, like the NHL really has has come since the since the 70s and 80s and even the 90s as well. So this is, this is a good one. Well, I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Um, I've been enjoying the, the playoffs, uh, watching le- fewer games once the Oilers were no longer in it, but I'm a fan of the storylines. And that's how I describe them with, you know, the the hockey playoffs, the NHL, the Stanley Cup race of like, what are the storylines here? And uh, people are like, it's not a soap opera, but <laughs> isn't it kind of? There's lots of great storylines happening. You've got, you know, players who've requested trades or maybe they're playing for a new contract, guys who were injured um so even if you don't watch the full game just tune tune into your sports highlights uh and uh they'll they'll fill you in anyway so all right caroline it's time let's chat all about 
our top five favorite road trip songs. Um, so this is going to be this is going to work the exact same way as we have in our past top five episodes. Um, so what we'll do is we'll each alternate picks until we'll share our five. Um, Caroline, uh, yeah. I'm really curious. How did you organize your top five? Like, is there is there a specific order to it? Um, I organized my top five according to my heart. Okay. And that is the note that I have here on my uh, notes. I like it's. And by the way, because nobody can see it, <laughs> she actually, Caroline, did write my heart and it's yeah. in caps and it's circled. Yes, it, that's how emphatic it is. Because um, I, I couldn't, every time I came up with one, I, I started overthinking it. I think, like, the is this really better than this song? Or is this too niche? Caroline, does this have appeal for people who who aren't me? And and I just, you know, got into it and thinking it, and, and I had so many like attempts at making a five. They were ordered, unordered, um, random. They were themed. I was so close to only choosing road themed songs, mm-hmm. like songs about driving or. Uh, cars or literal highways in some t- cases um because when you google road trip songs that's what comes up like the ultimate songs are there and it, i guess it makes sense that the songs that are about driving would be good to play while driving it makes it makes sense in there so um ultimately i i realized i was having problems i was having trouble going just by the songs. So I ended up with five song categories. Okay. And, the, and the songs that I... And I did limit it. This is not... This is only <laughs> partly an attempt to worm more songs into my list. Um, but I chose an example song for each of those playlists. Because I would say, like, how can I choose between this song or that song? They, they do such different things. And I was like, well... This is what I have to have. So I'll explain it. It'll make more sense, I hope, as I go along. But that's kind of my thinking process on that. How about you? Straight up top five? No. Like, I had a really... Like, in the in our past top five episodes, how well, I've done it, obviously, is I've started from five to one. And then one was yeah. my absolute favorite. I couldn't, I couldn't do that for this one. Like, I really tried to. But then I was like, well, no. Like, I... I like this song, but, you know, in the context of going on a road trip, this song is better than that song. So I was just, I I scrapped that idea altogether. So I actually ranked, I actually have mine listed uh, in order by release date. So I'm going to be going oldest to most recent. And longtime listeners of Overdue Finds will know that I have nothing modern on my list. I'm so curious what your most recent is. <laughs> You're gonna laugh when you hear my most recent one. Um, yeah, it. I really, I really tried to include something like really branch out and expand uh, my musical tastes and pick something newer. But I was just like, but that's not better than this song. This song yeah. is so much better for road trips. So. My apologies to everybody. I know people don't tune in to get my modern music takes. So, uh, yeah, if you like my older music picks, uh, you're going to enjoy this one. (laughs) So, Caroline, uh, let's start off with you. What do you have in your your first spot there? Okay, so I'm going to count down from five to one. And my fifth category that I... uh, came up with was the mood setting instrumental song Ooh, okay and the one that has been on my list through all iterations of me trying to scratch out an order was green onions by booker t and the mgs um it's a song even if you don't know the name it's you would recognize um, the instrumental of it. It gets a good vibe going. Um, 
it also uh, for I was gonna say for our more modern listeners, here's a thirty year old <laughs> song. I'm just gonna drop in it. It's the same tune as um, that girl by Maxi Priest and Shaggy oh, yeah. from the '90s. Um, it has that they sampled that that kind of like bass beat of it but you know a car just like cruising down the the highway you got some it was originally going to be called uh funky onions but according to wikipedia but um they thought that that was a little too you know risque of a title so but if you're looking for that funky vibe uh green onions for sure you know, in my head, I'm picturing that would be, like you said, a great song to obviously set the mood to. Like, I have a feeling like that would be a great song. Like, just as you're like, picture you're leaving Edmonton, you're heading southbound, and you're like still in the city. That's like, yeah, you're, that's playing as you're just getting on the QE2. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it could be transition music mm-hmm. of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think definitely uh, you're going to want to have songs with lyrics obviously and we'll explain why as we go along but the mood setting instrumental i think is a crucial part of the road trip mix i like that yeah that great idea yeah okay what is the oldest song (laughs) and i and i just want to say like mine is from oh i should have looked it up but green onions is quite old so i i mean i would guess the 60s i think so yeah yeah so my first song is also from the 1960s. I guess. Well, I know for a fact my song is from the 60s. We're <laughs> Maybe I should do some research on this. <laughs> I'll get Fact it. checking on Overdue Finds is important. We are a library podcast. And it was released October 1962. Oh, there we go. So that is definitely, unless you have something older coming up, uh, that's probably the oldest song that you're... <laughs> song recommendation you're going to get today um so mine though was actually uh from the year 1969 and you can't go on a road trip and you know you picture going down the highway there's only one the first song that came came to my mind when i started my list was born to be wild by steppenwolf i know it's kind of a cliche song we've seen it like a million times in movies the most famous one of course is it's associated with the 1969 film uh, easy rider um but yeah we've seen it in a lot of movies now um as people go out on road trips and it's to me it's like doesn't matter like what your music taste is you have to have at least one rock song and this is this is the one to uh to kind of uh, get you going so maybe this would be a perfect one to play like especially I mean, we have a lot of listeners from all over North America and and the world and everything. And if you're not familiar, when you're driving on highways around Edmonton, and in particular, like Alberta and the prairies, it is not the most exciting drive. It's uh, a lot of just prairie baldness. And occasionally you'll get the odd hill you'll get to go over maybe. But um, Born to be Wild's one where you can kind of put it on and kind of give you a little boost of energy if you uh, if you're tired of looking at uh, just like wheat fields, uh, but yeah, just even even the lyrics from it, like get your motor running, head out on the highway, looking for adventure in whatever comes our way. That right there, it describes perfectly describes a road trip. So uh, yeah, Born to Be Wild by, by Steppenwolf. Yeah, if your if your road trip had a mission statement, it would probably be the opening lines of, of "Born to Be Wild." So, Caroline, what's your what's your next category for your number four pick? The CanCon. You you have to have some element of Canadian content um, because Canada has such great groups and bands and musicians. This is not a hardship to fill, but for my CanCon element, I went with. Echo Beach by Martha and the Muffins. Great song. I like it's it 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 doesn't have that literal driving part to it that a lot of my other choices do, but it it kind of captures that freedom element. Um, you know the lyrics of. Uh, from nine to five, I have to spend my time at work. My job is very boring. I'm an office clerk. The only uh, 
something something Echo Beach. So so it's it's about kind of breaking free, going to this place where you can just like have fun and relax and do this. Um, I I just love it as a song. Um, I guess I, maybe I'm going chronologically to oh no so far i am because this came out in the early 80s um and yeah i i think that um echo beach lots of other obviously great canadian um bands musicians songs i think martha and the muffins deserves a spot on a road trip playlist so i actually didn't realize that they were canadian and I remember, I think the first time I recall really hearing that song was, um, it was about 10 or 15 years ago now. Uh, so remember the Big Shiny Tunes collections? Of course. So uh, Much Music had put out, I think it was like Big Shiny 80s or something like that. And it had like mostly like kind of like new wave rock on it. Yeah. And that song was, was included uh, on that album. So I remember that was like kind of the first time i heard that song but yeah it's it's a great absolutely great song so go check that one out it was um one i heard on the radio a lot and thinking back it, it is because of the CanCon rules of needing to play i uh, yeah, i'm supposing uh mm-hmm. needing to play a certain amount of canadian um content on the radio and this i guess this is a good place to talk about radio and Yes, I think having road trip songs is important. And I've definitely made road trip playlists and brought along like CDs and music and specialized for that. But there's also something really fun about just turning on the radio and having it be that like random music experience of driving. You never know like what it's it's going to be and you're you're maybe playing uh a little risky you know if it turns out to be like a downer of a song or something but um most songs on the radio are just you know there to to get you in a good mood so Mm -hmm. i've definitely um i part of why i was struggling at times was because i think there have definitely been times where i've liked listening to you know those local radio stations yeah, and I mean, right now, you know, in the year 2023, we're, we're so spoiled because, yeah, I remember going on road trips as a kid and, yeah, you would have your standard station that you would listen to, you know, in, in the city. And as you drove outside the city, of course, at some point you would lose that radio station and then have to, like, now as somebody who grew up in southern Alberta, um, pretty much that meant, like, once I left Medicine Hat, uh, we were getting, like, CBC radio and, like, country stations and as a small kid i who liked the beastie boys i absolutely hated that so we are obviously very spoiled today with obviously yeah. we have things like satellite radio and um especially to you know uh, streaming services you can do like your apple carplay or whatever yeah. uh so yeah that's kind of like a lost it's almost like music like you said music roulette every summer Uh, My mom, my sister, and I would drive from our home in Ontario to our cottage in Quebec, which was quite a long drive. And my mom had a, like, a a printout, except it must have been, like, sent to her by the CBC of, like, all of the CBC stations between our, like, where we were. And so that as we... um, like got out of the range of one then it would be like okay get the paper where are we closest (laughs) to and we would like look down the list and be like oh i think we're it's the it's the perry sound station okay we'll cue that one up um and sometimes we had to like wait until the the last possible moment before we lost it um just so that we didn't lose any of like peter zoski uh on the radio so yeah so what um is coming up next for you uh, so this one has absolutely nothing to do with road trips per se, but this is just a song that, you know, as you're, you know, on the highway and you need some music and it's just got a cool beat to it. And road trips too, of course, are all about like, you know, you're going, obviously, you know, you're going out on this adventure 
uh, you're you're not at work. You're kind of enjoying life and everything. So uh, for me, I went with uh, 1977's "Lust for Life" by Iggy Pop. So this one actually was originally co-written by David Bowie. And Rolling Stone magazine even has it listed as number 149 on their list of the greatest songs of all time. Um, So actually, I first became aware of this song uh, in 1996 because it was used in all the marketing. uh, Like you would hear it on the trailers for the movie Train Spotting. And of course, it's featured on that uh, that soundtrack. And I remember as a kid, I or as a teenager, I ended up buying this soundtrack mostly because I loved that song. So I was like, I'm going to buy this whole soundtrack uh, just for less for life. But um, yeah, that for me was I think it's such like an awesome song. And uh, it's funny because the song is actually about a deceased drug dealer, uh, which isn't surprising now to know that, of course, kind of why it was used in in train spotting but um i just think it's like a cool song it kind of gets you going and uh yeah lust lust for life and that's kind of what road trips are all about yeah there were a lot of song choices that i was like oh yeah this man makes me want to get up and dance and it's like but you're in a car (laughs) so uh but you know it's got it's got that feeling you're so right bryce it is hard to explain how Lust for Life was everywhere mm-hmm. in 1996. Like, you could not escape it. Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously it was before both of our times, so I don't know when, you know, when it came out originally in 1977, how big of a hit it actually it actually was. But, yeah, like, around that time, like, I mean, the Train Spotting soundtrack was absolutely huge. Train Spotting was, you know, in itself a, a pretty decent hit anyway. Um yeah, it was it was absolutely everywhere, and I remember um, I also used to listen to who I still do uh, occasionally uh, some sports talk radio. So uh, sports fans know, of course, Jim Rome is a really famous um, uh, r- sports radio host, and uh, he used "Lust for Life" to for his theme music for years. I'm not sure if he still does or not, though. But uh, yeah, the song was absolutely everywhere from like the late. 90s to the early 2000s for sure so caroline how about you what's uh what is number three on your list okay so category three is the power ballad that you have to belt out you just (laughs) have to do this and i've gone there's so many great options we've talked about a lot of them on the show before i've gone with total eclipse of the heart because um there's a lot more lyrics to it than you think there will be when I was listening back to the song. It's actually quite wordy, but all you need is that, that chorus where you're you're living in a powder keg and giving off sparks. Like, you, you, you are just into the music, um, shouting out at the top of your lungs. This is probably when you, like, come to a stoplight and someone pulls up beside you and they see you just really emoting it with all you are worth. Um, Yeah, it's uh, uh, hard to say if there's a better power ballad era than the 80s. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so either. It's because uh, even like bands like you know, I think of like Heart, yeah. who in the seventies, uh, like late seventies, very early eighties, were kind of more like this. Obviously, like a classic rock type sound that we would yeah. consider now. But then, like after that, it's like mid eighties to nineties. It's like power ballad after power ballad. So yeah, yeah everybody like Chicago, same thing. Yeah. Um, these and rock I- bands all going power ballad and heart you know we've talked about alone being a great one that certainly fits in the category here um a lot of the early to late 90s celine dion could go in here uh, but uh yeah just something you can really just emote into uh is a is a good uh release i think for the road trip yeah great pick all right, so uh, Caroline, uh, I think my next pick also kind of slows things down a little bit. Like a good concert, you know, I've recommended two kind of rock songs. 
we got to slow things down just a just a little bit here. Um, so my my uh, next song is from 1979. So that's number three, by the way. And we haven't left the 70s yet. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm ready. 79. My my next recommended song is Take the Long Way Home by Supertramp. Uh so this is a song that maybe like I'm a big classic rock fan, so I love, you know, music obviously from the 70s. So I'm quite familiar with this song and maybe it's one where even if you're like uh, I'm not familiar with Supertramp or I don't think I know that song, once you hear it, you will 100% recognize it so uh yeah so take the long way home came out in 1979 it was actually on super tramp's best-selling album called breakfast in america so the super tramp uh kind of co-lead singer roger hodgson in an interview mentioned that the song is actually all about the journey of self-discovery which of course for a lot of people going on a road trip that's what road trips can be mm-hmm. all about uh the song you know it the song basically is all about reflection and also kind of taking a look at maybe what could have been I don't mean to make this sound all depressing and everything but it's totally like a melancholy song and um it's it yeah it's you know caroline if i'm making a list of like probably my all-time favorite songs if this isn't number one it's probably number number two um yeah, if I'm in the if it's on the radio and I'm like park like if I have to go in somewhere, I'm finishing listening to this song. It kind of gives me chills every time I I hear it. And it's also one of those ones where I remember hearing it as a kid, but as you get older, you kind of like really start listening to the lyrics and you kind of, you know, maybe you identify with some of them a little bit, but um yeah, t- take the long way home by Super Tramp. It's a fantastic song. Also, the album title Breakfast in America also kind of has this like road trippy like vibe to it. I don't know. I immediately picture like a diner uh, stopping in and, um, you know, having a a road trip breakfast. I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching. Oh, yeah. No, it's actually funny you mentioned that because uh, the the cover album for it, it kind of it's like a shot of like New York in the eighties. And instead of the statue of Liberty, it's this like 1950s road or like roadside diner waitress. And she's got like, you know, the menu and in her hand, instead of the torch, it's like, she's holding up a tray and it's got like, looks like a glass of orange juice on it. So yeah, you, you nailed it on the hammer on the head right there. Well, super tramp did. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you, I picked up what they were putting down. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So what's next for you? Okay, this is the one where you... I'm like, just just go with me on this one. So it's at number two because this is where I have... You have two options um, because I think there are only two songs in existence that that will fit in this category. And so number two is the song that makes you feel like you're floating your hand through a field of wheat or clover. Okay. It's very specific, which is why there's very, especially the clover part. Yeah. Well, I was, I was like thinking like a wheat field and then I was like, I don't, that seems like scratchy. So I went with clover, but I don't actually know that that's the sensation I want either. If there are any um, field specialists listening to Overdue (laughs) Finds, um, I have some questions about texture. But basically, for this one, you are going with either Venture a Highway by America or Someone to Call My Lover by Janet Jackson, which heavily samples Venture a Highway by America. It has this floaty quality to it um, that is just, um, it's the sensation of like putting your hand out the window and like letting it go through the like the wind that's created, um, but also a field. I'm very specific. The field has to be there um, because it has that like sensation to it. Um, But yeah, it's, you're just kind of, whereas some of the others like, you know, Green onions, you've got that 
kind of funky vibe going or born to be wild like it's pedal to the metal like that this is that kind of floaty feeling of um you're just uh going over some space you're 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 not existing in any one place at the time it's just you know the sun shining it's warm you've got your your drink that you probably bought at a gas station um yeah it's it's definitely uh a mood music but also very much that experience of being on a road trip yeah just the way you're describing it there and you see this in all kind of movies where there's like a road trip and it's uh like at <laughs> nine times out of ten it's the the uh female passenger of course doing it and it's like she's got like her hand out the window doing yeah. the doing the wave thing but uh yeah. yeah, I yeah, and I mean the wheat thing too. It's like we're in Alberta. There's like wheat fields that's everywhere. The, that's the thing. Like it is. It's that feeling of you like your hand cutting through the air, but there's also texture on it. And so like you're you're walking. Maybe you've pulled over to the side of the road. You you've stopped at a roadside attraction sidebar. I love those, and <laughs> I cannot get enough of them. And if I'm going on a road trip, I am absolutely stopping at any giant object by the side of the road um anyway you've pulled over uh you may be stretching your legs a little bit you're you're running your hand over the tops of whatever the field is hoping that it's not some kind of like poisonous plant on there um yeah that's that's this song and and maybe there's more options but i really think you have a choice of two different songs to pick in there so you can either have ventura highway or someone to call my lover depending on which mood you're in uh when we started recording this episode if you would have told me that you would have a song on there by america <laughs> i would have not believed you at all so uh, would it cool. help if i said i've probably listened to the janet jackson one more yeah that makes more sense to me for sure yeah okay what uh is next for you <laughs> all right so um number four on my list keep in mind i'm going from like oldest yeah. to newest have here. we reached the 80s yet we're in the 80s but the early part of the 1980s <laughs> uh we are talking my next song is from 1983 now caroline you mentioned that you love stopping by these little roadside attractions and everything yep. you know who else loves stopping by like road like uh, roadside attractions clark w griswold from the movie National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, so my song is actually Holiday Road by Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. This is a song he did uh, specifically for the National Lampoon's soundtrack. So um, most people, of course, are familiar with the National Lampoon's uh Christmas Vacation. This song isn't in that movie, but it is featured in uh, obviously the first Vacation one and also European Vacation, the, the sequel, which came out a couple of years after that. Uh, basically, actually, it's kind of funny because uh, Lindsey Buckingham, he was approached by uh, the film's director and, of course, actor Harold Ramis, and he was uh, he asked him to create two songs for national lampoons vacation and i guess reluctantly you know lindsey buckingham was like i don't do soundtracks like that's re that's really not my thing and um yeah basically he he said he ultimately decided to honor uh, harold ramus's request and apparently they must have gotten along and everything and he actually recorded the song holiday road without seeing the actual film and uh yeah he liked that uh he liked that the movie of course ended up being really uplifting and funny and when you listen to this song uh the song itself is really uplifting and you know if you're obviously i'm <laughs> i'm in my early 40s and i've seen the vacation movies countless times and uh for me it's like when you're on the highway going to, going down the road a uh, holiday road it's talking about going on vacation uh there's in the song there's dogs barking in it it's kind of weird but it's uh, i love it like holiday road is totally a guilty pleasure song of mine i remember this is uh maybe a good time to 
let maybe newer listeners know that we actually have done an episode on road trips mm-hmm. before, uh, and we talked about road trip movies, and um, I remember during the recording, I don't think it made it in to the final edit of that, but there is an outtake that we have that is I find very funny, and it's you just like losing it when you realize <laughs> you're the only person in the room who had seen Vacation. Yeah, it floored me. And this, yeah, it's just, I don't know, maybe I just because I love comedies, but to me, it's just like, you have, that's a, that is a comedy movie everybody has to watch. It's so, so good. And I, good for the summer months, I think, too. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Perfect for that. Yes. Um, and by the way, too, uh, a little more incentive to go back and listen to that episode. If you recall, Caroline, uh, that was the episode I recorded just after I got back from St. Louis. And I recorded that episode with a giant head wound. So when you go back and listen to it, you will find out what happened to me on that trip to St. Louis. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it all comes together, right? It all yeah. It all comes together. That was 2019, it must have been? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, go back in our archives and uh, find that one. It's a good one. Yeah, we'll have a link to it in our, in our list as well. Um, because you might, in, in between all of our songs, you just put it, so you've got uh, Lust for Life, and you've got Echo Beach, and then you've got a 45-minute podcast uh, of us <laughs> talking about road trips, and then, you know, some uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart and yeah. Holiday Road. Yeah. So, Caroline? Yes. We're at the end of your list now. One category left. One category left. What What did you end on? So this is the literal song about driving cars or roads. Um, you need to have at least one on your playlist. I, 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 there's opportunities for other ones, but this is the, the one. A lot of debate about this one. I ultimately went with Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins and this is I mean Bryce I cannot tell you how little I want to actually go to a danger zone or something (laughs) that could be a danger zone or even the highway to the danger zone I don't want to be like that's not me but when you play this one on a road trip, you can put that persona on for a couple minutes and pretend that that might be where your destiny lies. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's again, the, it's uh, a big song. It's going to carry the, the trip for uh, those few minutes. And uh, yeah, I, th- I just think you just feel like you're ready for anything when you're listening to danger zone uh caroline i was this close to including that song on my list and yeah i can't agree with you anymore it's uh it's fantastic um it's kind of like it's almost like relevant again because like obviously we had top gun maverick come out last summer which was a huge hit and that song was still featured in in that movie and um yeah that song is like almost 40 years old now yeah and still holds up it's it's awesome yeah so that was my of course the many 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 other driving songs car songs highway songs whatever on this um you know i I, I, a lot of um bruce springsteen songs are about uh driving and this and i had born to run on my list the top five for the longest time and then i was like i've been on a lot of road trips and i've never actually (laughs) played born to run during one of them it's one of those more like like you'll use it maybe in advance to get hyped for it but then when you're actually on it although i was thinking that maybe there's a distinction you know if you're going on like a motorcycle road trip versus a car i'm firmly in a car i've been i've been picturing this uh not not only am i in a car i'm in the driver's seat i'm the girl in the driver's seat running her hand through the window (laughs) through the through the air out the window um the snacks beside us on that so yeah i don't know if you think 
motorcycle road trips, if there's anything different, uh, listeners, we would love to hear your perspective on that. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for people who do the motorcycle road trip because I I couldn't do it. No, no it's yeah, it looks fun, but yeah, I'll take the safety and comfort of of my vehicle instead. Yes. Uh, so you're number one. Uh, we got to what 1983. 1983. Yeah. Okay. So we are ending my list. The most recent song. The most recent song, which. In a few years, we'll be 40 years old. I'm taking you to the year 1986. We are going with Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Sometimes, Caroline, for a road trip, you need a song that, you know, if you're if you're singing, big shock, I'm not a big singer, but sometimes you need a song that everyone can sing along to. And this is one of them. Yeah. And you don't have to be a big Bon Jovi fan, but everybody knows of Living on a Prayer. Maybe you've heard it in like countless weddings or in movies or whatever. Like everybody knows Living on a Prayer. Um, yeah. And it's actually, the song is arguably Bon Jovi's biggest hit. It originally came out, of course, in 86. And the song actually just last year hit 3 billion views on YouTube youtube uh of course the song talks about two characters tommy and gina they're a working class couple who struggle to make ends meet um yeah of course we learned the song tommy tommy loses his job as a dock worker due to a strike and gina works as a diner waitress um yeah bon jovi in an interview said he really wanted to to uh, really have a song that really told a story and represented people who he knew and grew up with. Um, Not necessarily, you know, there's nothing about living on a prayer that's, you know, screams road trip or going somewhere per se, but um, it's just a, it's just a great song to kind of get you amped up. And if you are kind of one of those people who love singing along to music with other people in the car, Everybody knows living on a prayer. It's it's perfect for me. Yeah. No, it is. Like when you said there's nothing about it that specifically says road trip, but also everything about it says road trip. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. My most recent one, 1986. You know, I, I <laughs> do enjoy uh, some gentle teasing about that. But looking at my list, my most recent one, if you go with the Janet Jackson um sample of uh, Ventura Highway that was released in 2001 so oh. um, it's it's not a lot of like current songs on my list either which we've we've on this show we've talked a lot about this that neither of us really are are spending that time in this modern music era but also I think there's I, I think it's more than just us. I think, you know, absolutely, sure. You can have more recent songs than uh, 2001 or 1986, and, and they work for the um, the road trip idea, but there's something about it being the songs that you've listened to a lot, that you've listened to over decades, that they're the same ones that, you know, as a road trip, as a... As a, as a child or when you were younger, the ones you do know all the words to. Um, I think there is something about, something to having music from a different era being the soundtrack to the road trip. Maybe there's a nostalgia, maybe there's re- trying to reclaim something. I, I don't know, but I think there's there's something more than just we like old music. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a comfort food thing. It's, you know, your favorite your favorite dishes, you know, your favorite songs. And, uh, you know, you know what you're getting, you know what you like. And, uh, yeah, there's just something, something about it. You know, you're not going to be disappointed or have to, you know, you know, like you said, you're not going to be looking on the dial for something else. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I think, um, yeah, this, these, these song choices are an excellent start to anyone who's maybe looking to, on a little trip this summer so um Mm -hmm. yeah it's i've enjoyed hearing your choices (laughs) you as well uh before we get to our roundtable questions can you let our listeners know what's coming up on their next episode coming out on friday june 16th 
Hold on to your butts because on the next episode of Overdue Finds, we're taking a look back at the 30th anniversary of the release of one of the biggest summer blockbusters of all time, Jurassic Park. So join us as we talk about the original movie, its countless sequels, and of course, the books from Michael Crichton. Uh, This is one I've been looking forward to like all year. I've been reading the original Michael Crichton book in anticipation for this recording. Um, I'll probably talk about this more on the actual episode itself. But uh, this is a movie that when I was a kid, I saw five times in the theater. Like, it's one of my all-time favorites. So I this is going to be great. Looking forward to it. You saw this five times in the theater? I did. Uh, there was... And like... Whatever. Maybe I should save these questions until next week. But like, <laughs> like, like in in initial release, or because it w- it was re released a couple years ago. This was all uh, initial release. Wow! Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's uh, there was one now one of those screenings. I will say. One of those screenings, uh, we had tried to go see something else, and it was sold out. There were still seats available for Jurassic Park, so we went and saw so, Jurassic Park. You know, they twisted your arm and... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. We'll talk more about that next episode. So, round table question time. Caroline, I'm going to throw a curveball at you here. Yeah. I sent you the questions, but I just thought of one. I'm ready. Uh, favorite road trip snack? I was, like... The minute we started talking about it at the top of the episode, I thought that could have been a good question here. It might have been one we talked about last time. Yeah. Um, if it is, I uh, hold no, like, I don't know if I'm saying the same answer or not. But um, I don't know, for some reason, Swedish berries are coming to mind. Okay. That's, That's a pretty, pick. like... But very specific. I don't know. I don't know if I'm conjuring up a memory of it, but I don't know. You can kind of put them there and have them and like pop them in your mouth. I don't know. I'm going to, I guess I'm saying Swedish berries <laughs> until I can think of something else. Yeah, those are great road trip snacks. And I would kind of put that in the category. They're perfect for road trips, especially if you're driving, because uh, my pick, for example, is peanut M&M's. Mm-hmm. Now, for both those candies, they're not going to leave a mess on your hands or anything, won't make them sticky. So, uh, yeah, peanut yeah. peanut M&M's are my kind of, if i got to stop somewhere, grab some gas and a drink, peanut, I'm always grabbing a bag of peanut M&M's. Good call. Good call. All right. So, Caroline. We'll see if you can tell the difference between that and the questions that I actually prepared for. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm ready. All right. So, we've each suggested five great songs for your road trip. And so, well, actually, you mentioned a few more than five. But, I mean, you can kind of make your own playlist now. But... What about actual albums? We don't people don't listen to actual albums as much anymore. So, for you Caroline, what's one album that you would take with you on a road trip? This um answer is pulled from real life and it is the album I take on road trips and that is Now 3, which <laughs> is not Now that's what I call music. Three, but it's the Canadian series that was coming out at the same time as Big Shiny Tunes. There were a couple of these compilation um, things. There was Big Shiny Tunes. Um, there was Much Dance, which had more like dancey hits. Now was like the pop and kind of approaching rock on there. Uh, so Now Three is one of my central albums of who I am as a person. Uh, it starts out, the first song on it is Tub Thumping by Chumba Wumba, and it just gets better from there. It has all of the songs that uh, you want on a road trip, the ones you can sing along to, the ones to create that vibe, the ones you can like scream the lyrics to. I mean, like, Meredith Brooks was meant to be, like, screamed as you're going down the highway. So, yeah, I'm 
I'm taking now three, um, and it's we're gonna party like it's 1998. Yeah, that Meredith Brooks song that also would be a great road trip song. For it sure. is. Yeah. Uh, for me, I went with. Uh, believe it or not, I didn't go with a compilation album. I actually went with a studio album, and I went with uh, the Beastie Boys' very first major studio album. And that's "Licensed to Ill," which came out hey in 1986. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Let's just keep this train rolling. Uh, but yeah, we get a ton of their hits like "Fight for Your Right," which in itself would be an awesome road trip song. Brass Monkey, and uh, probably one of my all-time favorite uh, Beastie Boys songs, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. So, uh, yeah, absolutely love that album, and pretty much anything Beastie Boys. uh, Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a good choice. All right, now most importantly, you know, we didn't, we talked a little bit, like, we don't want to be going on a motorcycle, but what about, like, like the actual vehicle itself? So, you know, if we get to go on a, you know, if you're going on a road trip, Caroline, uh, what would be one pop famous pop culture vehicle that you would want to go on a road trip in? I sent you kind of a yeah. list. What did you What did you pick? Did you go off something from the list, or did you have one already queued up? Well, my choice. I think it. I think it was on the list, but it's also the one that came to mind um, for me. Uh, and Bryce, this car is automatic. It's systematic. It's. <laughs> Hi, dramatic. It's Grease Lightning. Oh yeah, that's That'd what I'm good. going with. Uh, Grease Lightning, probably the um, uh, dirtiest song in all of Greece. When I was looking at the <laughs> the lyrics, but yeah. Um, yeah, I just I think it. Uh, you've got that uh, classic car feel to it. A little throwback vibe. Uh, it was either going to be this or, like, with the the anticipation of the movie coming out this summer, maybe, like, a Barbie dream car. Um, but um, I, I went with Grease Lightning, holding off judgment on Barbie's classic car. Now, you probably have to watch those Grease Lightning because uh, it, it might just, like, start driving up into the sky. Yeah, I, I meant to, ch- to, to double check because I was like, this this car like flies as well. But um, Grease Lightning, the the car in the movie is actually Kanicki's car that they, mm. they work up. And then he yeah. um, is injured just before the the drag race. Spoilers for Greece for 19, 1978. <laughs> we know that's the demographic of, of when people are listening. Um and then, so he needs uh, Danny, John Travolta, to step in and drive it. Um, but I'm not, I wasn't actually, I, I actually spent some time thinking about whether Grease Lightning and the flying car at the end are the same car. So yeah. uh, maybe I would have to test drive to really try it out. Maybe. Bring it back and say, I'm sorry, this car didn't fly. I'm not satisfied. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, how about you? All right, so I went with, no shock here, I went with the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Almost went with the Batmobile, but I couldn't figure out, I couldn't decide which Batmobile Mm. I wanted to take a ride in, because I'd want to, like, try them all out and everything. So, um, yeah, the DeLorean, because honestly, honestly, Caroline, if I could take a ride in any type of car... It would be a DeLorean. Like, it doesn't have to be souped up. It could be barely running. I would just want to sit in one and go for a spin around the block. Like, that would be so awesome. And, I, of course, I'd want to have, like, the doors that, you know, the big wing doors that open up. Um, yeah. And also, too, if you run into any problems on the road trip, let's say bad traffic or you don't like the route you're taking or whatever, you're in the DeLorean. You can go back in time and go another route. So, uh it would, be, it would be perfect. Yeah. That's a good choice, for sure. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Make sure that you're subscribed to the show so that you get all of our new episodes. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We love reviews. And most importantly, tell a friend about the show. Maybe your road trip partner. 
Don't forget that we'll have a link to everything that we talked about in today's show notes. And we love to hear from listeners. So you can email us at podcast at epl.ca. Both Caroline and myself get those emails and we love hearing from you. You can also share your thoughts about the show with us on Twitter uh, at epl.ca and use the hashtag EPL Overdue Finds. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you.